name's Sharon Curtis and I'm a freelance creative designer for Sizzix. I thought I would put together a video tutorial today showing how to put together the Eileen Hull journal die. This is a Biggs die, which if you haven't seen a Biggs die before, Biggs dies come with a steel rule blade embedded in this foam. And that means that you can cut through much thicker materials with this type of die than you could with um, the thin wafer thin metal dies. So for, for journaling and, and books and that, that type of thing, of course, that's really, really essential because you, you want something a bit sturdy when you're making a book. I've got a few examples of journals that I've made with this die. This one, um, I've just put watercolour paper inside. Today I'm just going to show you how to assemble this die, uh, this journal, rather than um, how to decorate it because that's the, that's the amazing thing about this particular die I think really is it's a blank canvas. It, it's a journal and you can use it for whatever type of thing you want. I've made a recipe book with it. Um, this actually is one that I carry around with me in my handbag and I use this um, for my shopping lists and I've put you. I've clipped a to-do list on the inside cover and literally I carry this around with me all the time. So there's lots of ideas and, and as you can see whatever style you can create a journal for that style. Now in terms of the materials you can cut, most of these I've cut from mount board. Um, you can buy huge sheets of mount board from uh, places like Hobbycraft. You can also buy it online. You can also use the thinner grey board type um, material. This I use if I'm also going to add material, um, felt, um, leather, anything like that. If I want to cut a journal from that I do tend to use this thinner grey board because by the time you've put two layers of, of fairly thick fabric to it I find that's just a nice weight. I've got these as well to show you. These are really inexpensive. I suppose you call it leather, don't you, when it's not real leather. But these are plastic, plastic leather look type sheets. And I bought, these were about five pounds each for, I think it was for a meter. And I've already made a couple of journals out of each of these. And I've still got, as you can see, I've still got enough left to make quite a few more. Um, and for this, all I would do is take the grey type board, put double sided adhesive on both sides, put the material on and run it through. Um, and it cuts through no problem. Um, and I haven't found any issues with the score lines either. The one thing to bear in mind when you're using this die is because it, it, it is designed to, get, to cut thicker things, you will find if you just cut something very thin with it, your score lines might actually cut rather than score. So if, if you do want to just, say you wanted just, you had some leather and you just wanted a very thin, sort of um, softer leather type journal, um, what I would recommend is experiment before you use your expensive leather, um, but maybe put a piece of grey board first and then what you want to cut, um, just so that it's it's not so much pressure on, on the what would be the crease lines. But um, experiment with it really, that's, that's the great thing about this. Um, it, as I say, it's a blank canvas and you can create whatever you want with it. So I'm going to switch my camera to overhead and we'll, we'll literally make a journal so you can see and I'll show you how you thread the elastic through. Um, the, the other great design feature with this is you create, you cut two of the, the journals, so you've got a front and a back cover and you use double sided tape to stick them together. But when you also allow, add the elastic through, that also enforces reinforces where you've you've um used adhesive so this this isn't going to fall apart which is very clever because obviously over time sometimes when you use double-sided adhesive it does sort of come come unstuck so let's crack on i'll switch to my overhead camera and we'll put one together so i've cut a piece of mount board um to just about the right size and the adhesive sheets i'm using here are from creative expressions I'm just going to trim a little bit extra off there. 
so it just covers the journal part of the die. You do get um, a few extra bits on this die, some little um, labels and um, a little tab thing that, that's quite nice to use on the closure. But I'm just going to use the basic journal today. So I've stuck that down. You'll see that I've I've done this portrait. Um, that's because doing it this way, I can I can cover both the front and back from one adhesive sheet. I've got this gap at the bottom, but I'll use. I've you can see here I've got a sheet of scrap leftover adhesive. If I'd have done it the other way around, I'd have covered the whole piece with the um, adhesive sheet, but I'd have used a big part of that whole A4 sheet, whereas doing it this way, I can get both the front and back from that one sheet. You can also, if you've only got a tiny gap, um, just use double-sided tape to sort of fill in. You might have to do a couple of rows of it, but um, it's a good way of filling it in, and it, it just um, makes your adhesive sheets go further. And I've got a sheet of 12 by 12 paper here. This kind of paper is my favourite for doing these journals. I really like the sort of wood grain, wood plank sort of look. And from a 12 by 12 sheet, you'll get the front and back cover. So I'll just trim around that and smooth it down before I run it through. You want to place it with the pattern facing down onto the die. Um, obviously, this puts the crease lines in. So doing it that way will make sure that that the pattern paper's on the outside. And I don't need my platform, just the two clear cutting pads. I'm using my Big Shot Plus. You don't need a plus for this. You can use the standard size Big Shot, but you do need the extended cutting pads because this is quite a long die. So, but yeah, either machine will work. And as you can see, that's cut beautifully and my score lines are all there ready for me to fold it. And then I need to cut the same again for the front or the back, whichever way round you're looking at it. And I like to get these little pieces out in between every use because they do build up in the holes and after a while they won't cut. And then it's harder to get them out when they're compacted in. So try and do it after every cut and then you won't have any issues. So I've jumped ahead and done the um, other cover. And as you can see, they fit together beautifully. You just have to line up the holes basically. So it's very simple. And I like to use this red line tape. It's just a bit stronger than normal double sided tape, so it works perfectly for this. And I like to cover all of it, even this little tiny bit on the other side of the top hole. I like to make sure it's well and truly stuck, so I also put a tiny bit there. And then I can just take the backing off. This is the, the most fiddly bit I find. <laughs> so I'm using my die pick. You can see really how quick it is to put these together. I'm um, definitely planning on making lots of these for Christmas gifts this year. I've already made quite a few as presents actually. And the easiest way is to just kind of look for the light through the holes. And if you make sure you've got the, the holes lined up, then, then you know you're dead straight, really. So that's the basic journal all put together. Um, I won't decorate it on, on video. I'll just show you how to thread the elastic. Now, this elastic I've got is um, two millimetre. And you can see you just go through the top and out again, then back through the next hole and down, then across to the next hole and then back up and through that top hole. And that's your three strands that you need to tuck your paper or books into. And then this is the kind of, this is the hardest bit really when you're using this elastic is you need to go back in to that centre hole and obviously you've already got a bit of elastic in there so the best thing is to use a pokey tool just to sort of push that through. 
You can use 1.5 millimetre um, elastic, but I quite like this two millimetre because it's um, it when you put heavy books in it, it you know it takes the weight so, and I, I do quite like the look of it. But yeah, I, I would say 1.5 or two millimetre is is the perfect perfect size for these. And then once you've got them both through, you can just tie a knot, make sure they're all nice and tight. And that's it, and then just trim the edges off. Then you've got your three little strands. You can either cut paper to go under those, or for this one we'll put some notebooks in. And as you can see, that the where you've re-threaded it through the top, that also reinforces the book itself. And if you want to also put a wrap around piece, all you need to do is cut a piece that will fit all the way around and poke it from the outside in. Again, where you've got two pieces going through, you do need to just give it a bit of a help with your die pick. And then work out how tight you need it, because obviously you want it snug. You don't want it loose, but you also do need to kind of allow for the fact that you're going to have some paper or books in there as well. So that feels just right. And just tie it in a knot. You can put a button or something if you want to on the back just to stop the um, cord going back through. But um, I, I like a simple knot because then it doesn't get in the way of my inserts. So that's my journal pretty much done, really. Um, and then it's up to me how I want to decorate it. Now these notebooks I've bought from, um, these are from Morrison Supermarket actually, and they're A5 um, notebooks and I just trim them down. They're the right height, but they're just too wide. So I just take a metal ruler and um, a standing knife and just trim them down. You can buy traveller notebooks that are this exact size, um, but I found that they're quite expensive actually. Um, so keep an eye out in supermarkets and, and you know pound shops and whatever. For this type of notebook you can always decorate the covers of these if you feel they're a little bit plain you can customize them you can also make your own notebooks as well if you've got lots of um, scrap card to use up and all you need to do is just look for the center page and slip it under the elastic really really simple and this is where I do quite like this thicker elastic because having three of these in here, there's a fair weight to it. And look at that. They fit perfectly. And it feels ever so sort of weighty and sturdy when you've got the notebooks in it. It's a fabulous design. So that's my finished book. Um, I can go away and decorate this now, um, as I've done with some of my others. You can see this finished one is, is kind of similar. And I've just literally added a couple of die cut circles on the front and some flowers. For this one, I left out one of the notebooks. I've just got two notebooks in and then my to-do list. But it gives you an idea. And of course, as I said before, it's a blank canvas. If you want an art journal, put some watercolour card in. So there's lots of possibilities with it. But anyway, at least I've shown you how to put it together. I'm sure I'll have some other videos on, on different journals that I put together. But for now, um, I hope that's been useful to you. For more inspiration i would definitely recommend checking out eileen hull um, she has a facebook group called eileen hull's fan club and her design team put photos in there of the projects they do so if if you've got this die i would seriously recommend joining that group because you'll get tons of inspiration from them the other place you can look is the sizzix website there's lots of tutorials on there and that's www.sizzix.co.uk Thanks ever so much for watching. I will be back. I'm planning to do a video on the passport die as well. So I'll be back shortly with that one. And thanks for watching. Bye.